As we read Job 39 and 40 today, we're right in the middle of God's response to Job after dozens of chapters of hearing Job express his anguish in the midst of his suffering and from Job's friends who honestly throughout the book, well, they've acted more like accusers than true friends or companions. And as God responds to Job, I wanna encourage you to see that he doesn't respond as a judge or, or like a policeman but as a teacher, in fact, one Bible commentator describes God's response as loving, winsome, vivid, powerful, and a humorous teacher. You may say, what do you mean? Well, read through the chapters. In verse one of chapter 39, God asks Job, do you know when the wild goats give birth? Or in verse 26, is it your wisdom that makes the hawk soar? It's as though through God's response, he's drawing Job's attention to the wonders of the world around him, showing him that even in the midst of perceived chaos, there's divine order, order that surpasses human comprehension. And everything God points to here is a reminder that his understanding and design are beyond human grasp. You know, we can tend to think as human beings that we can understand and control everything, but the book of Job reminds us that God's ways are higher and his thoughts, they're beyond our own. And so Job does something in chapter 40. He comes to a place in which I think true freedom and peace is found in the midst of suffering. He surrenders. You know, God invites us to trust him even when we don't understand the reasons behind our circumstances. I think Job's story challenges us to embrace the mystery of God's ways, to surrender our need for complete understanding, and instead, lean on his goodness and his sovereignty. You see, the book of Job reminds us who God is and who we are. See, because he's God, God Almighty, we can trust his love, his wisdom, his justice, his mercy, because he is in control, even when, to us, things may seem out of control.